Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I almost forgot a very, very major component to learning how to <clears throat> recognize when God is directing you. If it lines up with God's word and his ways, his standards. You know how the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Yeah. A lot of people get caught up in relationships that end up being destructive over time because they didn't take heed to God's word. They don't have to ask God when the word points it out. You got somebody you know could care less about the Lord and his ways. And every time you want to go to church, there's an issue. Every time you want to do Bible study, there's, there's a hassle. Every time, come on now. Every time you want to hang with your Christian friends or you want to have a prayer meeting or you want to go to a prayer meeting and, and they're all upset and there's drama and there are arguments and you have to choose between them and the things of God, you are unequally yoked, babe. You better cut that loose like a disease. Here's another one. Jesus said, do not cast your pearls before swine. The other half of that is, do not give that which is holy unto the dogs. Now that says it right there. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure those two sentences out. But how many of us born again Christians Filled with the Holy Ghost and that with a mighty burning fire, tongue talking, Holy Ghost. I mean, come on. And we get all caught up in the things of God until Mr. or Mrs. Wright comes walking into our lives. And all of a sudden, all those little scriptures start falling by the wayside. And we start coming up with all kind of excuses to fulfill the lusts of the flesh. <clears throat> if it goes against God's word, it goes against God's will. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not lie. You mean the only way you... <clears throat> Sorry. You mean the only way that you're going to get that business deal is if you lie through your teeth. Is if you misrepresent and you leave out details that are pertinent to the formula, to the formulation, to the whatever, to your objectives. And you make it look like chocolate pudding when in actuality it is cow dung. That is deceit. Deceit is a lie. The Bible says, thou shalt not lie. <laughs> hard, isn't it? Yeah, it's hard when you want to do it God's way and you want to trust God to bring it through. There are times when you have to reveal some things <clears throat> in order to save your marriage. You have to expose some things about yourself in order for God to cover you. You know why? Because his word says, if you expose your own sins, if you confess them and turn from them, I will cover you. But if you hide your sins, I will expose you. 
And when God exposes, sweetheart, no, nah, not a good thing. So you have to line up with God's word. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. When was the last time you confessed some sins to some people to pray for you about? When was the last time you sat at your pastor's desk and expressed your weakness to pornography, expressed your weakness to getting drunk, expressed your weakness to lustful, illicit acts of sex? Express you I know a woman, listen, I know a woman who was, I mean when you say a die hard born again Christian, oh this one was real. She was not phony and fake, she was real. This woman was she had a husband and they had a friend. And because this woman was going through a lot of changes and very vulnerable at the time. She found herself becoming attracted to the friend. So rather than allow that to steer her sideways, and the friend had no idea, but rather than her giving provision for the flesh and allowing the guy to know, she went to her pastor and asked him to pray for her that God would give her the victory and deliver her from the desire she was feeling. She confessed it. She brought it out in the open. She got prayer. Hello. And guess what? She never was haunted by it anymore because she brought it to the light. It lost its power over her. In her heart, she wanted to be right with God. And she did not want to hold any secrets that could overpower her in a later moment. How willing are you to hear from God when you don't want to hear what he has to say? Because it is so it so opposes what your desires really are. Our flesh will pull us in the wrong direction. And that's why we have to consult with the word. We have to get godly counsel and we have to get prayer. Hmm. Yeah, you won't be sliding in the home base, baby. You'll be sliding into the very grips of Satan. If you keep that mess covered up. Because that's where Satan operates. In the back. In the corner. In the dark. So when you're trying to follow God's ways. And God's will. Doesn't line up with his word. Would Jesus do this? Do I have a peace about it? Does this compare to what God calls real love or is this a real mess God bless you again as you seek God's will